Um, okay, so uh, today is April 3rd, 2024, and I'd like to call the meeting of the Monroe County Board of Zoning Appeals to order. Um, please call the roll. Sure. Skip Daly. Here. I'm here. Here. Okay, so we have four members in person and a quorum. Okay. Um, would you kindly introduce the evidence? Sure. I'd like to introduce the following items. The evidence. Then amended. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve that, the evidence. I second that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yes. Skip Yes. Okay, motion Okay. And let the record reflect that D is online, but somehow or another she's unable to really um, be heard at this moment. Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve tonight's agenda? I'll make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. I'll second it. Second. Yeah. Yes. Skip Daly? Yes. Pamela Davidson? Yes. Okay, motion carries 4 0. Okay, that's great. We have uh, no minutes to approve, no administrative business, no old business, and so we can get right to the new business. And the first two items on the agenda are VAR 24 dash 9A and B, holding minimum lot size variance from Chapter 804 and a lot width variance from Chapter 804 concerning 1.75 plus or minus acre parcel in Van Buren Township, Section 29, at the 9100 to 9000 block of West L. Wren Road. And uh, I believe Mr. Myers will be reviewing this with us. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna assume that this mic is working. <clears throat> All right, so this is uh, at 9051 West Elrin Road. Um, that address is actually new, hence the, um, in the uh, advertisement for this uh, agenda item, I just had 9100 to 9000 block. Uh, it's because it just received a, a new address. All right, so the petitioner is applying for, you need to share your screen. Okay, um, I just, Sorry, one second. We can see you though. <laughs> okay. Okay. There we go. All right. So, um, <clears throat> as I was saying, this is on West Elrin Road, it's in Van Buren Township, Section 29. The petitioner is seeking a minimum lot size variance and a minimum lot width variance for this subject property in order to obtain permits to construct a single family residence. Proposed location of the single family residence as illustrated by the petitioner's conceptual site plan, which is an exhibit in your packet, uh, appears to meet all setbacks and buildable area requirements. Um, based on available aerial imagery, the property appears to have exhibited a manufactured home as late as 2005. Um, <clears throat> and the subject property is zoned agricultural rural reserve, um, containing only 0.75 acres and measuring only 130 feet wide at building line. Um, as per Chapter 804 um, for, the, for the Agricultural Rural Reserve Zone, um, properties in this district must have a minimum of two and a half acres and measure at least 200, 200 feet at building line, hence the need for these two variances. Um, so the petitioner will need to submit a residential building permit application complete with a certified plot plan uh, and also provide evidence of a valid septic permit issued by the Monroe County Health Department before they receive final permits to build on the site but the uh, requirement of the um, 
two variances before you this evening are uh, the first step in that process. <clears throat> so here we have the site conditions map. As you'll note, that uh, the slopes on the property are all under 15%. Here we have some aerial imagery of the site. The petitioner actually owns the property to the east as well. Here's another aerial image just uh, of the reverse. This is from the south. Okay, and here is some street view images of the petition site. And here we have a letter uh, to the Board of Zoning Appeals from the petitioner requesting their two variances in order to build on the property. And here we have the conceptual site plan that the petitioner provided for the purposes of this uh, report and variance yeah. petition. So as you'll note, all setbacks in buildable area um, can be acquired through their uh, proposed location uh, with respect to septic and um, all other aspects of the site. Okay, that brings us to staff's recommendation. Um, staff recommends approval of both the minimum lot size variance and the minimum lot width variance. Um, specifically citing that, there, um, that any new development on the property would first require either of these two variances. I will note that staff also performed a uh, deed history research uh, with the petitioner uh, providing documentation of the uh, records for this property um, dating back to the 1940s uh, and staff was able to verify that this lot being 0.75 acres is actually a single lot of record um, and therefore can proceed with these variances and acquire permits. Um, I'll now take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Do members of the Board of Zoning Appeals have any questions for staff? I don't think we have any. So the petitioner, the petitioner's representative, Mr. Holden, if you'd like to address the Board of Zoning Appeals, you have up to uh, 15 minutes. If you'd come to the podium or if you're online, and I'll uh, swear you in. Please uh, raise your right hand. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And are you Mr. Holden? I am. Okay. Thank you. Is the mic on? It's not green. It, push button? I think there's a button that needs pushing. There you go. Oh, good. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Drew, for your comments. Everything sounded terrific. I appreciate the uh, consideration for approval. This is. Uh, uh, a property adjacent to our existing home that uh, we intend to, to build a home for our in, my in-laws uh, that are aging and so it would be a blessing to us to be able to do that it sounds ideal do you do members of the Board of Zoning Appeals have any questions for Mr. Holden? Well, maybe I should ask the staff but septic all okay we don't have to think they about that, that whatsoever next. They do that next. They do that next. Yes. All right. I'm, I'm early in the queue. <laughs> I will note that there is an active permit application in uh, this health department's realm. Um, they have approved the uh, preliminary uh, soil report uh, that was provided in that application. Um, there has not been a um, formal permit issued yet, um, but at least the, that process is uh, moving through. Oh, that's helpful. Thank you. That's helpful. Thank you. Okay, great, Mr. Holden. What we'll do now is take um, comments from the public, and if there are negative comments, you'll have an opportunity to come back and address those. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there members of the public who would like to speak in favor of this petition? If so, come to the podium or raise your virtual hand or let us know in some way that you'd like to speak on this matter. We don't see anyone. If there are members of the public who would like to speak in opposition to this petition, uh, please make yourself known, either by coming to the podium or raising your virtual hand. No? Okay, so uh, there's no need for a rebuttal. So we bring it back to uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals for um, further discussion and or a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we approve variance 24-9A, the hold the minimum lot size variance from chapter 804, and also variance 24-9B, the hold the minimum lot width variance from chapter 804 for property located in the 9100 to 9000 block of West Elren Road. And would that be because um 
it doesn't harm or bring down property values around it, and it's the minimum variance that is needed to um, make uh, this property work. And uh, and um, I'm losing it. There's no undue harm <laughs> yeah, from no, granting this yes. variance. I totally agree <laughs> no with you. No environmental damage, nothing. No. Okay. Yeah, no harm to neighbors. There we go. So it, it, would anyone like to second that motion? I'll second that motion. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve both VAR-24-9A and VAR-24-9B, which is the minimum lot size to Chapter 804 and minimum lot width variance to Chapter 804, respectively. A vote yes is a vote to approve both variances. D. Owens? Yes. Okay. Pamela Davidson? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Skip Daly? Yes. Guy Lofman? Yes. Okay, variances are approved five to zero. Thank you, Mr. Holden. Thanks. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yes. And, and good luck with the construction. That's yes. a very worthy goal. Yes, and thank you for working so respectfully with our staff. Thank you. Oh, we move on now to the third and fourth items on the agenda, VAR-24-10A and B. This is the Sullivan minimum lot size variance from Chapter 804 and a minimum lot width variance from Chapter 804 concerning uh, one 1.9 plus or minus acre parcel in Polk Township, Section 28 at 9140 South Chapel Hill Road. And Mr. Brown, if you would review this with us. We'd thank, thank you. Uh, so the purpose of this request was to replace a, the existing manufactured home on the lot with a new manufactured home. Specifically, they want to replace one that's measuring 14 by 50 feet with one that is 30 by 60. It was found during review that it is only, as mentioned, 1.9 acres in size in the forest reserve zoning, which has a minimum lot size of five acres. In addition, the minimum lot width at the building line for forest reserve zoning is 200 feet, and there is essentially nowhere along this property where the lot meets that minimum width. As such, both of these variances were triggered. I would like to note that we do not have a residential building permit on file for this at this time, but any development on this property would require these two variances. Okay. And here is the letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, regarding the name, you may notice that this one says Eva Southern, while the name of the property owner is Eva Sullivan. Uh, as mentioned in the letter, there, she, the petitioner is purchasing a home from Clear Creek Homes. Uh, one of the representatives there helped her set up this petition and helped write up the letter and just misspelled the name. And here is the site conditions map along with the current zoning map. There is, it is in the Eco 3 area. However, it is in, there is no development in area of 18% slope or greater, so an Eco 3 variance is not required. And here's the location map and the comprehensive plan map. And here are two views of the property, one from the driveway and one from the other side of Chapel Hill Road. Here's the petitioner's site plan, as well as kind of an interior layout of the proposed uh, manufactured home that will, is proposed to be placed on the lot. And so as such, staff recommends approval of VAR 2410A and VAR 2410B due to the pre-existing non-conforming nature of the lot. Okay, do members of the Board of Zoning Appeals have questions for staff? Uh, I, I noticed in the, uh, in the petitioner's request that it's minimum lot size variance, but it doesn't specify uh, minimum lot width variation. I assume it's well within our discretion to, to recognize both of things are needed and, and grant the petition or consider the petition, even though we didn't specifically ask for it. But since there's a little variance, I wanted to make sure we got everything lined up right. Yes, it was noticed that a minimum lot width variance would be required as well after the petition was applied for. So I'm glad you're here so we don't have a problem. Yes. 
Yes. Any other questions for staff? If none, um, if the petitioner, maybe is Ms. Sullivan here, uh, if you would kindly come to the podium and have you signed in? I have not. Okay, so we'll swear you in after you sign in. Yeah, that is a pretty color. I like that color. <laughs> I feel like we're on Saturday night. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, Daniel, could you put the conditions A, B, and C up here so we can see those? Um, and would you kindly raise your right hand and do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. Okay, you have up to 15 minutes to review um, your desire and your petition with us. Well, I currently have a, a 1984 mobile home, and I just it was just time for me to upgrade. So I went to Clear Creek Homes, and uh, they're going to build a modular home for me if these variances are approved. Well, it looks pretty nice. Thank you. It looks very nice. Do you have? Any, do members of the BZA have questions for Ms. Sullivan? And and that new um, uh, home will be larger. It, it it says somewhere two bedrooms. Is your current smaller? Is that why the footprint is larger? Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And would you also like? lot size variants that you requested and also a lot width variants so we're addressing everything at the same time yes please great great okay we're going to take uh, comments from the public and if there are any negative comments you'll have an opportunity to rebut okay thank you if there are members of the public who are in favor of this petition please come to the podium or make yourself known on um, on this virtual format I don't know if we see anybody, or if Dee had a question. I don't know that. Okay. okay. No, I don't. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So um, are there any members of the public who would like to speak in opposition to this petition? Please make yourself known by coming to the podium or raising your virtual hand. And we see no one, so there will be no need for a rebuttal. We come back to us for further discussion and or motion for these two variances. I cannot hear. Guy, are you talking? Here, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Speak into this. We have uh, technical yeah, issues. Okay. Oh, you're all set. I, I, I thought I had that on. We still can't hear you. Still can't hear me? You ha I have to be a little closer to your. If they're, if they're too close to each other, they'll be. There you go. Okay. Thank you, Pam. Okay. Uh, uh, I move approval of variance 2410A, Sullivan minimum lot side variance, and variance 2410B, Sullivan minimum lot width variance concerning a 1.9 acre plus or minus in Polk Township, section 28, located at 9140 South Chapel Hill Road. Uh, on the basis that this uh, Let's see, is this, is this uh, design or use? This is design, is that correct? It is design, it is design, yes. Yeah, that it uh, meets the standards of 812-6, which uh, include A, the it will uh, uh, not be injurious to the public health, safety, or general welfare, that it will uh, not affect the use and value of area adjacent properties in a substantially adverse manner, and it will, uh, uh, is the minimum necessary to eliminate practical difficulties in the use of the property. And it's also pre-existing non-conforming. And it's a pre-existing non-conforming site, which uh, we need to adjust because you can't make it bigger. That's right, so I, thank you. I would be happy to Back in. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, Skip, you can finish. I, I just have a question. I didn't hear you bundle both A and B. 
He did. Yeah, did I, I think did I did. I, okay. asked, I, okay. I specifically said both of them. Thank you for checking up on okay. me. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. If you would kindly call the roll. Sure. There's been a motion and a second to approve VAR 24 10 A and VAR 24 10 B, which is the Sullivan minimum lot size and lot width variance to Chapter 804. A vote yes is a vote to approve both variances. Margaret Clements? Yes. Skip Daly? Yes. Yes. Guy, Guy Lofman? Yes. D. Owens? Yes. Pamela Davidson? Yes. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. We wish you all the happiness in your new home. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. You're Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, we move on to a suite of variances. There are four of them. 20 variance 24-11A, B, C, and D. And these have to do with the minimum lot size uh, variance to chapter 804, the minimum lot width. Uh, variance to Chapter 804, a front yard setback variance to Chapter 804, and an Eco 1 minimum lake frontage requirement to Chapter 825 um, with one acre of contiguous buildable area. So, uh, Mr. Smith, if you would be so kind as to review this with us. This is nice. I'm motivated. <laughs> yeah, I, th I can hear you. I think so. I cannot hear if anybody's talking. I certainly can't hear them. I don't think it's working. It's not picking you up on the, on the transcript. Text. Nope. Mm. Test. Test. Okay, oh, that's there we good. go. <laughs> that's good. There it is. Okay, can you hear me, D? Yes, thank you. Okay. So the request, um, so as Margaret said, there are four variance requests here. So for a minimum lot size, minimum lot width, front yard setback, as well as an Eco 1 um, variance, which includes minimum lake frontage and one acre of contigu contiguous buildable area. Okay. Um, so for the, the purpose of um, these variances is to allow for the uh, construction, but also alteration of the existing back deck to be bumped out um, than what is the current design of the deck. So um, for the information about this site is that it's zoned forest reserve. And in this zoning district, it requires a minimum lot size of five acres, a minimum lot width of 200 feet, and a front setback of 25 feet. And under our ordinance, the lake is considered a front. So that is why uh, the front yard setback is being triggered here. Um, additionally, the property is located in the Environmental Constraints Overlay Area, Eco 1, uh, which the property is not meeting those Eco 1 standards. Um, so it requires a minimum lake frontage of 300 feet. And it also requires a one acre of contiguous 12% uh, slope or less buildable area, which it is also not currently meeting because it also doesn't meet minimum lot size. I see. So aside from all of that, all other design standards are being met and the petitioner has applied for a residential building permit and that is R-24-61, which is on hold pending approval of this variance request. So here on the screen, we have site conditions and a parcel map. So the parcel map in particular, so staff went ahead and did an analysis and um, we had discovered that within a half a mile radius of the petition site, which includes 18 parcels here, they were all under five acres in size and they are all zoned forest reserve, which requires five acres. So nobody else in the neighborhood is meeting those requirements. <laughs> Yeah. 
Uh, here are some site photos. So the back deck in question, um, you can see in the uh, center top photo as well as the bottom left and the bottom right. So essentially, um, it's kind of angled and what they are trying to do is to essentially square it off. So they're gonna, they're going to add, I have got a diagram that can explain this better, but they're going to bump it out so it's not going to keep that shape. It's just going to be more like a rectangle. So um, this is the site plan that uh, I created to kind of help uh, describe what's going on here. So in the picture, we've got a lot going on. So the parcel lines are off, they're inaccurate. So I've got a green line here and I used information from a survey that staff had on file and that is actually the true property line. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's uh, necessary information for this part, which is it's approximately 10 feet from the property line. So that is why it is not meeting the 25 foot front setback. The orange here is the scope of the project. So um, you've got the existing deck here and then that orange represents how they're gonna bump it out so it's gonna be more of a rectangular shape. Does it, hopefully that makes sense. That was very clear. That, that's very helpful. I like that. I did too. Thank you. And this is the survey from which um, we are deriving that information from. So um, this is an older survey, but nonetheless, they do have the existing house there with the present wooden deck. And um, he's got here 10 feet away from the property line. Um, and then as well, he's estimating about 100 feet um, from this point to the center and then from the center to the rest of the property to be less than 50 feet there. So that is why the 300 foot front, or yeah, 300 foot frontage is being triggered here. Um, this is the petitioner's letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals, also in the staff packet. So this leads to staff's recommendation. So for minimum lot width, lot size, and front yard setback variances, staff believes that practical difficulties have been demonstrated. You know, the, the lot itself already is non-conforming with the zone. It doesn't meet lot size, doesn't meet lot width. And because the house predates the current ordinance, it was built in an area that otherwise under the current ordinance doesn't meet the front setback. I see. Um, and then additionally, staff does recommend approval of the Eco One variance in regards to minimum lake frontage and the one acre of contiguous buildable area um, on one condition that um, silt fencing be installed as well as contacting the planning department for an inspection prior to construction under the petitioner's building permit. Okay, well that's Does anybody have any questions? Do, do members of the BZA have questions for staff? No? Do you, do yes. you know when... Wait a minute. Do you know when that house was built with the deck in that construction? And do you have any clue were all those houses built kind of in the generally the same time? I don't know precisely when, but it does predate 1997. So that's under yes. the current ordinance. So it's so. been like that for a long time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the pictures of the deck looked very worn. Yes. Very worn. Yeah. Well, if uh, Mr. Morkin is here, or Mrs. Morkin, and you'd like to address the Board of Zoning Appeals. Yes, could, could you come to the podium? Yes. And uh, yes. have you signed in yet? Yes, I have. Oh, great. Then I'll just swear you in, and then you'll have 15 minutes. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do, sir. Thank you. And uh, I'll turn it on. Would you turn it Until the green light goes on. Um, there you go. Okay. And with me here also is uh, John Van Sant, who is the builder that yes. will be, if this variance is approved, who will be doing the construction. Uh, experienced local builder here. And he may, if the board would like, he may also uh, ask any questions that you may have. But thank you uh, first. Uh, Sean uh, has been quite diligent in investigating this, uh, went out to the site, uh, took some 
um, nice photographs that give the board a perspective on this. This, um, this home, the bell rings for me, I guess, but uh, <laughs> yes. this home is kind of a unique home. It's in a, a little neighborhood uh, in Hardin Ridge. So you have to drive through the forestry to get to the little community, which essentially was uh, begun at the time the lake was, uh, was put in. And this home, uh, to answer the question specifically, I think was constructed in 1961. So, and frankly, uh, nothing has been done to it. And uh, I'm kind of excited about the prospect of improving this uh, to that point of it would improve property value. I think that this clearly home needs some redress and some work. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, the request for the design uh, standards variance, um, we, I appreciate uh, the recommendation for a waiver essentially on the minimum lot size and the minimum lot width. Uh, as has been noted, no home in this area has that going for it. <laughs> so it's kind of like exactly where, where I am. Um, the, uh, the construction, uh, the proposed construction project is it's actually fairly conservative. Uh, the back of the house has a porch, as you can see from these photographs, uh, which porch uh, is about 10 by 12, and that extends uh, as an addition to the existing home. All I am requesting, essentially, to do is to square that off uh, to make it more livable. It's a very narrow kitchen, uh, a smaller, uh, it's a very uh, smaller living area that would be uh, immeasurably improved with this simple squaring off process. I am not asking that this board approve that those additions be extended uh, any further than the existing line where that porch sits. I see. So uh, it's sort of a very conservative yet um, request, but still uh, would require the variance. And the variance would also uh, allow for each of the sides to be um, uh, constructed so that they're adjacent to the existing porch. And essentially, it's really only 240 square feet, um, or 280 square feet, 140 square to the left and 140 square feet to the right. And uh, then the roof line would be extended over that. Uh, there would be some uh, I guess they call it soil disturbance, but very minimal in that uh, area to the left and to the right. Um, we have uh, another question I heard as I was listening to the other presentations is, there was a question about a sewer. This uh, community has its own uh, sewer plant that's been approved and is closely um, managed and, and supervised by the state of Indiana entities. So this, would in, this addition would not include or would not uh, need any sewer or change to the existing arrangement there. And uh, we have a homeowners association. We participate in uh, government cleanups in the area, and we generally try to be good citizens down there. That's nice. And uh, you, you're being a good citizen by working well with our staff and uh, trying, you know, we really appreciate that because they work so hard and we're all in this together and, oh, yes. and you're interested to protect the environment too and we appreciate that. And yeah. certainly if the variance is granted then I will comply with the installation of the silt fence and I'll contact Sean or the planning uh, department for the necessary or the requisite inspection too. Well, that's great. Thank you for answering that because I was going to ask okay. that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we'll hear from the public. If you, oh, one, yes, Mr. Lockman. Uh, 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 ground disturbance in, in these areas always concerns me. Will you leave the existing pilings, the existing posts where they are, and then uh, add on, on the outside? Or there will be uh, essentially um, con you got to use the mic. There'll be essentially. I've hit it twice, so I was trying to avoid it. <laughs> but there'll be essentially two. Um, areas which will have a minimal um, trenching uh, on either side of the existing porch. 
whether it would be uh, concrete block or concrete itself, I'm not sure. But that area uh, where we're going to do this is kind of on a plateau. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, um, nevertheless, the silt uh, fences should be installed, but it would, um, it, it's kind of in a natural uh, um, placement where there wouldn't be a lot of runoff, if any runoff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of the trees and everything are, as you can see in the pictures, are preserved and, and, and uh, would also resist any kind of erosion. It's grass area as well, which is helpful. And, uh, and then the limestone rocks that go down to the lake. Um, so I hope I answered that question. Well, the, the current deck has yes. posts. Yes, it does. Will those posts remain? Um, it, it will probably um, new posting, uh, but remain in the, in the area. In other words, the deck isn't going to be extended any further than uh, the existing um, deck. Right, but you'll replace the 50-year-old yes. Yes, they're, it's, uh, they have been in there, uh, uh, I think, they may have been added after 61, but they're quite old. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, and the, 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 the extension will be based, will be on posts or on a whole complete It'll foundation? It'll be on uh, concrete footers, or the footer, or probably concrete block footer or concrete, the extension to the right and to the left mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the deck, further uh, the deck and its existing structure would be improved and maybe there's new uh, product that you can use for deck instead of wood mm -hmm. but it would not uh, require any extension into the uh, prohibited area okay thank you thank you well we'll hear from the public then okay. and if there is any negative discussion you'll have a chance to come back thank you very much thank you um, are there members of the public who would like to speak in favor of this petition? Please make yourself known. Um, come to the podium, raise your virtual hand. Okay, are there members of the public who would like to speak in opposition to this petition? If there's none, we come back to the Board of Zoning Appeals for further discussion and or a motion. Are you going to do it? Or uh, I, I can't do it because I'm the chair. But it is a complicated I would like one. to move <laughs> that we accept variance 24-11A, the Morgan minimum lot size variance from Chapter 804, and also variance 24-11B, the Morgan minimum lot width variance from Chapter 804. Additionally, I would like to move that we approve variance 24-11C, the Morgan front yard setback variance to chapter 804. And additionally, variance 24-11D, the Morgan Eco one minimum lake frontage requirement variance to chapter 805, subject to the condition to install silt fencing and contact the planning department for an inspection prior to construction. And would this be because it was pre-existing non-conforming in the first place and that it doesn't detract from the surrounding properties, in fact it fits in, and that this is, um, ec you know, min practical difficulties have been exhibited and, and that it, um, measures are being taken to ensure the protection of the environment, I mean, is that? Perfectly said. Okay, so, <laughs> if that's Thank the case, you. Yes. then is there a second to this motion? Is there a second? Well, this, this, Skip, would you like to second this one? I'd be happy to. Second. <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve variances BAR-2411A, 11B, 11C, and 11D. Eleven 11D. 11A, B, and C are lot size, lot width, and front yard setback to chapters to chapter 804. And then 11D is the Eco One minimum lake frontage, as well as the one acre of contiguous buildable area from chapter 825, with the condition that they install silt fencing and contact the planning department for an inspection 
prior to construction under R-24-61. A vote in favor is a vote to approve all four variances. D. Owens? Yes. Pamela Davidson? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Skip Daly? Yes. Guy Lofman? Yes. Okay, motion is approved, five to zero. Thank you. Enjoy it. You'll have a beautiful situation there, and it's just going to be enhanced. Yes. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> dear. Well, if you leave that for us, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Now, um, is there anything else on our agenda tonight? I do not have any reports. And I now, I see. Uh, Dave, did you have something you'd like to report? Yes, the uh, Monroe County versus Bedford Recycling Appeal has been scheduled for oral argument on July 22nd at oh. 2 p.m. Okay, okay, and there's a lady in the audience who didn't have a chance to speak, or and and we don't know. Can we help you? <laughs> Is there public comment time? Um, we normally don't have it, but we'd like to hear your comments. Okay. <laughs> I'm Sarah Gail Tala. It's nice to meet you. And I've been here before talking a little bit on the same subject. Um, I live at Lake Lemon. I own four houses surrounding the Porthole Restaurant. I've lived across the street from it for 40 years. Yes. And um, I haven't had the problems I have now. I like the Porthole, and I love the improvements that people have made. But the um, problem is, uh, first I do want to say I worked in the speech and hearing department for eight years. That's and, why you look familiar, yes. <laughs> and the decimal level um, that, that you experience as a young person or an older person will hurt your hearing later. So people don't realize when they're listening to rock and roll bands really loud, it's damaging their hearing. Um, I, I have to wear ear protection in my house oh. because the porthole is so loud. There is, a, or your, when I came last time, the ordinance and uh, Mr. Schelling had told me that uh, it's 10 o'clock. Is the t after 10 o'clock you have more than 50 feet? Well, when they close at 10, there's still people talking, they, and they did the close at 10 last year, which I was happy, which means that the people yelling in the parking lot will be done by 11. Now they're staying open to 11. I was wondering if anybody gave them a variance on that because it's loud. Okay. The other thing is, um, I have right next to me is a little cottage, and there's three boys that live there. They get on the school bus every morning, two of them, at 6.30 in the morning. Wow. And the porthole plays music at a decimal level that's even damaging their house till um, 10 on Thursday nights. It used to be Tuesday nights, it's Thursday nights. So the, there's no restriction on the level. At 8 o'clock at night, they sometimes play this loud. One of the reasons it's gotten a lot louder, two reasons, is all bands are playing music twice as loud because they don't know about hearing. and the porthole put in huge windows on the east side that have like garage doors and they're screens. I mean, they're the size of, of a double garage door and they open them and the band is I right see. there. So I'm wondering if somehow you all could pass some kind of sound ordinance during the day. What if I came to your house and blasted metal, uh, heavy metal music uh, at six o'clock in the pardon evening? Pardon me, I, I have a point of order. Yes, um, Mr. Daly. Madam President, um, with all do respect, and, and it sounds as if you have some very well orchestrated challenges and complaints. Um, uh, I do have a couple of points. One, I don't know that this is the board that is authorized to hear or make any determination on that. that. That's what uh, I wanted to ask. And, and, and well, I'd like to continue if you don't mind. Two, you've not been sworn in for any testimony. Therefore, mm -hmm. therefore, technically, nothing you are saying could be on our record. And three, we've offered an opportunity for a member of the public to voice an opinion which has included complaints about a local business which is being televised publicly on our television without having them the right to um, 
respond or to discuss this, and I'm worried about that liability. Therefore, I would like to know if we could um, cut this off, and uh, if you'd like to stick around after we conclude the meeting, maybe we can get you in the in the hands of the right people to to make to make these um, issues that you have uh, may, maybe uh, put in the hands of folks that can actually um, address them for you. Is that fair? Well, I tried. I I was hoping for some kind of recommendation or advice because I have gone to. I came here before and I was given information and gone to the lawyers the lawyer and explained to me that it's the ordinance is ten o'clock and fifty three. Uh, may may I interject? But Skip is right, this is in our jurisdiction and we probably should shut this down. Yeah. But it's some other entity within a government will be able to help you. It's just not us. In okay, order, well, so it's I just have not gone us. to every single yes. office. I've gone to but every single office. In order office. to be here and to speak uh, with the Board of Zoning Appeals, it has to be advertised so the public okay. uh, can, and I don't think that this is the right, it's, it sounds like an enforcement issue, and you, um, yeah, we, we, no public notice was given, the porthole in was not notified, we have to abide by very, very- I'm not complaining about the porthole as a business, I love it as a business, I'm complaining about your your policy for sound yeah well that would be the Not planning department okay. the planning department and the plan commission and the cd i, I don't know exactly but i, I wish you told me that last time i was here and talked about this and everybody spoke to me pardon i was here, this is the second time i've come i i wish someone had said this last time i well i wasn't I don't, here I don't yeah i don't Maybe it was a different board. Well. S stick, I stick around. Progress. Stick around for a minute, and we'll make sure that we'll make sure that the right enforcement folks are aware of your concerns. That's but we can't we, we can can't do. continue on the record with anything it's else. Not enforce, I'm not asking okay. for enforcement. But but can I make a motion to adjourn, please? Motion yes, to motion adjourn. to adjourn. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.